Harvard Business Review has been a constant source of knowledge for all of us at Ideas Consulting Group. In our endeavor to share our learnings, we have rewritten few articles which we believe is relevant in the context that we are living today. This video is being recorded to convert that written article into a short presentation for your benefit. The article that has inspired this topic today is the topic is creating and sustaining a winning culture by Paul Meehan, Daryl Rigby and Paul Rogers, which appeared in South Asia issue Harvard Business Review, February to July 2014. You may wonder why is it that we have chosen something which is seven years old for our session today? Pandemic and the virus has proven that few organizations have been able to survive and emerge stronger where the people in the organization have been more aligned to what the organization does. Or in other words, where people have a culture or the organization has been able to build a culture which is a culture of excellence and a culture which is a winning culture. It is needless to say that strategy does matter. However, if the culture is not about executing the strategy as it is intended to be, it will never succeed. The research done by the executives of Bayan and Company revealed that 91%, which is nine out of 10 senior executives felt who, were, who responded to their research that organization culture was as important as business strategy for an organization to succeed. I would say it would it is perhaps more important than the strategy itself. Organizations which have winning culture have primarily two characteristics. A, it has a unique personality and B, there is a soul in the organization. And this essentially comes from people holding on to similar beliefs and shared values and taking pride in the company's heritage and achievements. And best part is this organization's unique personality ends up translating into customer focused actions and increased bottom line growth. A classic example is the Toyota culture, which extols quality and cost efficiency. Its workforce identifies with this and embodies the same principle. Is it easy to change culture? The answer is not. It is very difficult to replace habitual behaviors with new systems and practices. However, what people do not realize is that making the change is difficult. Sustaining the change is even more difficult. Often it has been seen that crisis can be a catalyst for change, which most of us perhaps all of us have understood during this pandemic and therefore the relevance of this topic as we emerge into the new financial year 2021-2022. So the question is, if you are willing to look at a transformation within your organization, what are the steps that you need to do together? There are essentially five steps. First, one needs to do a culture audit. Second, one needs to get full alignment and commitment from the management team. By management team, we mean people who drive the organization. Third, the focus has to be results. Fourth, how do you manage the drivers of change? And the fifth, which I found missing in many organizations, is how do you communicate the change of culture? And once you have achieved milestones, how does one celebrate? to energize the people of the organization to do more. Culture audit is very simple. Where do we stand in terms of our culture? 
And one needs to be brutally honest in this audit to understand what are the strengths, what are the areas of improvement or shortcomings, and what could perhaps be missing. It is always a great idea to initiate the journey with increased self-awareness. Believe it or not, culture change often faces the biggest bottleneck at the top of the hierarchy. So unless each and every member of the top management embodies the change and demonstrates and exhibits the behavior, there is not going to be the change that we want to achieve in an organization. This is extremely important. The senior management are not outside the purview of the change. In fact, they have to drive it. See, culture isn't the end, but it's a means to the end. And what is important is we must realize that what are we going to achieve because of the culture change that we are undertaking. Unless there are clearly set targets, the expectations from each member is unambiguously communicated and each and every milestone is monitored as it gets crossed. It is impossible to bring about the culture change because the only thing which is measurable is results. And that focus needs to be created across the hierarchy. Driving change is always very difficult, whether we look at it in terms of our personal lives or organizational lives. So it needs strong decision making, very strict enforcement of discipline, and relentless pursuit of the goals or the business result that we are trying to achieve through this transformation. And the entire thing that we are talking about must be aligned with the strategic direction, otherwise it will fail. Communicating and celebrating is as important as the first four steps that we discussed. There will be setbacks, there will be phases of uncertainty, and that is where the leaders must ensure that there is transparent communication so that employees commitment and motivation remain levels do not drop and the customer perception remains positive moreover small successes get people excited about the future and they really strive hard to get there but at the end of the day progress must be rewarded for ensuring people motivation that's all thank you for your time we do appreciate and value your business